Okay, here we are, and it's time to go over to Hong Kong and say hello to our friend and colleague, Yochi Shimatsu, who has contributed so very, very much in this last year to our understanding, and I think more than that even, our empathy uh, to the people and the, uh, well, the whole culture that has been decimated and will continue to show more and more signs of, of imploding the Japanese culture in the months and years to head. It is a living tragedy unfolding before our eyes in living color. Unfortunately, most of us over here in this country will never get to see it unless you're watching this particular website or listening to this program because the Zionist Nuclear Regulatory Commission and all the other Zionist entities here block the news out almost entirely. Yochi, hello. Welcome back. Well, thank you, Jeff. Yeah, we are right at the cusp of the anniversary, the start of the Fukushima disaster. Of course, the disaster continues. Uh, yes, indeed. Saturday mm. marks only the start of a disaster, which will continue for decades to come, and perhaps longer than many decades. And hopefully, and you know, and the, I think the great worry that we have is that this disaster is not like a self-contained thing that has a beginning and an end. It could actually spawn and it is spawning many other types of disasters, not just to human health, but to the Earth's very environment and the survival of life on Earth. Not just human life, but many, many, all forms of life it is threatening. And so I call it a Pandora's box before. It triggers other disasters which continue on and on and on. Uh, the, uh, the Fukushima, the whole event, is certainly not contained just within Japan. I think one of the real problems with something like an anniversary like that is that the mass media, you know, the big magazines and networks, they try to contain this into one little region of Japan as if it's something very, very local, which it's not. It's a global disaster, especially for the Northern Hemisphere, but all over the world, including places like Australia and New Zealand. It affects probably everyone on this planet, and the effects are ongoing. There are more surprises to come. So I think this is how we've got it. We've been trying to look at it, and uh, and as you said, the media has kept a lid on it. The government's kept a lid on it. Agencies which are in charge, whether of uh, nuclear power, or more recently, the uh, NOAA, the National oh, Atlantic yeah. Atmospheric Administration, which is the U.S. Uh, Weather Service, <laughs> yeah. has put a lid on the causes of these uh, tornadoes, these unprecedented tornadoes that have ripped apart the center of the United States. In fact, in the East Coast, even, you know, there's nothing uh, like that. So I think, uh -huh. you know, there's been a lid on what, you know, uh, the, the dangers of nuclear power uh, unleashed. Absolutely. What that high energy can do. Huh? Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, you, you see a linkage between some of the aberrant weather, such as your, your tornadoes, and the ozone hole, and of course Fukushima yeah. and HARP as well. And yeah. we're not talking about HARP yeah. as being the cause of the earthquake. We're talking about HARP as doing something else in the upper atmosphere, which That's contributes. Sort of an amplifier. HARP is kind of an amplifier, a kind of a superhighway yeah. on which these radioactive particles can travel. So it acts as an amplifier. And yeah, you know, we've been saying I've been saying this for the last several shows that you know that I think like in fact for many many shows that. The radiation out of Fukushima is extraordinary. It's up in the upper atmosphere. It travels faster than anyone imagined through the upper jet stream. And that is highly charging the upper atmosphere. It's doing things that uh, we just probably haven't been, ever been done to Earth since some meteorite mm -hmm. bombardment of millions and millions of years ago. Yes. And that the Earth's upper atmosphere cannot sustain this kind of high energy. And we've seen the opening of an unprecedented uh, ozone hole, which NOAA is going to launch a satellite with the Europeans. And the satellite's name is SWOMI, which is a Finnish word. I've been to Finland. It's a Finnish word, which indicates that the Europeans are very much worried about what's happening with this ozone hole that's opened over the Arctic Circle. Uh, we've seen Scandinavia with an unusually warm summer, which has nothing to do with the standard causes of global warming, as they said, carbon dioxide because it's not a very much of a carbon-emitting economy up there. They use hydropower. Uh, we're seeing a possible drought coming up because of a lack of rain over there. We've seen massive uh, green, very dark green, unusually dark green uh, northern lights over the Arctic, you know, like uh, people have never seen before. 
huge blotches of light. And also, we predicted that you know the uh, radio radiation combined with the electromagnetic manipulation done by systems like Har Harp's electromagnetic field are going to cause more floods, uh, more storms, more cyclones, and certainly tornadoes would fit into that category of cyclones. That basically, you know, I went to school in the American Midwest, and I once passed through, drive, drove through a town called Rusheville, Indiana. And it was very famous because half the town was gone from a tornado. Uh, it's actually called Russiaville. It's a funny story. You know, in uh, Hoosierland in Indiana, no foreign name is ever pronounced properly because of the U.S. government's massive suppression of the German community there, German immigrants there in Indiana during World War One. Okay? So everyone there had to go into denial of the fact of their homeland because of the huge pressure, and the pressure was coming from the highest levels of the Wilson government. People like, uh, who, uh, famous people like Colonel House, Woodrow Wilson, who settled World War One, and who were basically the people who inspired the founding of the Council on Foreign Relations, okay? And you talk about Zionists, yeah, there was a hand in that in World War One, and the German community there in Indiana was a real victim of that, and that many, many German families invited their homes to Oh, yeah. And yeah. it was something that they had to keep in the closet, you know. And, 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 and so this area, unfortunately, besides this political, cultural disaster they suffered, they got hit by tornado, which was a giant one. Rusheville half wiped out. The one we just saw hit, Henryville, is like a hundred times larger, okay? We're talking about, you know, something that was history way back then. Yes. Now pale. It's just a footnote compared to what happened in the last week. And that is not in the natural event, folks, because you know, tornadoes are based on heat energy, okay? The heat energy, a rising heat, a wet, this is basically moist, wet heat, rising from the ground uh, uh, and interacting with the colder air of the upper atmosphere. Well, the ground temperature in, in Henryville was 30 degrees Fahrenheit. That's below freezing point, okay? That's, that's amazing. That's below zero yeah. centigrade. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no heat arising. Yep. So whatever caused those tornadoes was a form of energy that is not heat, and that is electromagnetic. Uh, that's a, basically the electromagnetic forces caused by the combination, as, as, as you mentioned earlier, of Fukushima, the HARP missile defense system, uh, you know, the uh, uh, overactive uh, solar flares and all that. All this electromagnetic energy converging over North America and causing this massive, Un, you know, I mean, in a certain sense, unpredictable disaster in the sense that you know, it's a Pandora's box. We don't know. We know what's coming. We don't know what particular form it shows it would take. Uh, it took the form of these tornadoes and yes. hailstones yeah. the size of, uh, you know, of uh, softball coming raining down on these people. And a few miraculous cases of kids surviving, thank God. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just part of this ongoing disaster. And there's more to come. This is just only the beginning. One year after, only the beginning of a series of unfolding disasters that is being wreaked upon this planet. When you look at the uh, the Fujita scale, the F scale of uh, of hurricane wind in embedded in a tornado, I guess I mean the, the the winds are hurricane strength, but even more. If you go all the way up to an F10 or thereabouts, you're you're approaching the speed of sound. I mean that's that's amazing mm -hmm. when you think about that. It's yeah, seven hundred miles an hour. Any faster you break the sound barrier yeah, in the uh, internal yeah. core of that tornado, and it it so it yeah. surpasses two hundred and fifty mile an hour hurricane winds by a factor of uh, three. I mean it's just astounding. Yeah, and then it's coming from the north, going south, so it's coming from even colder temperatures without this Correct. rising heat. So it could not be heat energy. It's not a standard. Natural tornado. This is an artificially induced tornado, uh, several of them, ripping through the United States, going vast distances, 90-some sightings, right? I don't know how many towns destroyed, people losing everything. I mean, it just blasted these people. It's a nuclear force tornado, I guess. And this is only the first. Okay, that is, uh, that is, I think, there's a lot more things. The temperatures rise. Crew, the jet stream will retreat, but as you notice, the jet stream's been down far south from where it normally is this year. You know, it's been pushed southward. Uh, we've had all these uh, massive rain, you know, floods, rain, 
uh, cold weather, uh, all these just erratic, you know, uh, erratic, uh, you know, symptoms on the, on, in North America that have never been seen before. And uh, certainly not the cause of a, a, a standard carbon dioxide right, buildup right, and right, all right. that. And yeah. I, I, I'm sure that, you know, I travel in Southeast Asia a lot, as you know. I mm -hmm. don't like carbon dioxide because they do burn all the forest litter, the loggers set fire to forests to clear them out. So, you know, I'm definitely no fan of carbon dioxide. I would like to see a lot less of it on the, in the atmosphere. But that certainly is not the cause of this kind of uh, natural, these, uh, these uh, catastrophes, these catastrophic uh, tornadoes and cyclones that are happening. Now, let's go to Tokyo here. We have a, we have mm -hmm. a city, and there, I, I still, it just, honestly, I run out of words to describe this. How can it be that Tokyo decided to import all radioactive debris from from Fukushima from to the northeast, yeah. bring it into Tokyo, yeah. burn it in over 20 different incinerators, cover the whole damn city with radioactive isotopes. They don't even identify right. the debris when they bring it in. They burn right. it, the stuff goes up, it comes down. The city already has 25 times or more of the mandatory Chernobyl evacuation levels of radioactive isotopes. Right. What are they doing? What is going on there? Well, what are they let's doing? Consider, consider the name Hepto. Tokyo Electric Power Company, the Fukushima reactor. They're killing 30 All million people. Dedicated for Tokyo. Mm -hmm. They're killing 30 million they're people. Sacri they're, they're sacrificing their own customers, but they have nowhere else to go because they want to incinerate this stuff. They can't store it because they have no place to store it. That's Why burn it in Tokyo, so though? Why not burn it up in the, the north? Large, that's where the largest incinerators Yeah, are. I understand, they but they can... Get it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, they want to get the stuff into the jet stream. Out of, away They're from sending Japan. it over here. That has been happening. It will continue happening. And it's contributing. That continues to contribute. Not all of that uh, radiation that we're seeing in the jet stream, obviously, is not just coming from Fukushima. A lot of it is a lot pure this hardcore radiation, but we're seeing tons and tons of other radiation, you know, uh, lifted by the heat from the incinerators. These are very tall uh, chimneys that are coming out and going right up into the jet stream and coming and just, you know, basically putting a pall over North of America. It's this tragic that this uh, disaster is being exported. The U.S. government, the Canadian government are tight-lipped. They don't care. Say a thing, and that Canada is a major provider of uranium to Japan. The United States of GE technology in the United States was implicated in this weapons development at Fukushima, which has made this disaster so much worse. So, Tokyo Electric Power Company is more powerful than the government of Tokyo, the metropolitan government, it's, and the governor of Tokyo, Ishihara Shinjaro, yeah, yeah. a man who wanted to nuke the United States. Okay, this is a man who wanted revenge on the United States for whatever happened in World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, absolute, well, he's, you know, he's getting away man. with it now, isn't he's he? He's the governor. Yeah, he's, he's the governor of Tokyo. And then, so, you know, and one of the men who was enthusiastic sponsors of a nuclear-armed Japan to get revenge for whatever happened, you know, which we all have to learn that you, you have to turn the page in history, right? If you start living with revenge on your mind, you become something like the Zionist. You know, 2,000 years ago, this happened to my ancestor, and therefore, uh, you're going to die. I mean, this, is, this is madness, okay? Yeah, and this man is yeah. infected with a similar madness. Oh, yeah, good point. It's very yeah. sad. It's very, very sad that, you know, that this is happening in Tokyo. The other thing are these mysterious deaths all over Japan. There's just so many of them now, you know, that people know there's an epidemic of people just collapsing. 